Hey everyone, welcome back to the second devlog for my base building game. Thanks so much for all the feedback and support on the first one, and I know this project is going to be a very large undertaking, but I'm happy to see that there's a lot of interest and support for seeing it succeed. I've done quite a bit of refinement since the last devlog, as well as a few new things, but before we dive into it, if you're enjoying these devlogs, please consider subscribing. And for those of you who want to support me and see behind the scenes of the project as well, there's also a Patreon, and any support for this channel goes directly back into the channel via assets or time I'm able to spend working on these projects. So if that's of interest for you, please consider checking that out. Okay, let's dive into this devlog. The first thing I wanted to look at was changes to the building system. The building system is quite complicated and I want to enable the person to build at any height. But once they start building at that height, the walls and floors then need to lock you into that height so that they're always the size of a full person. So for starters, what I was working with to begin with was that I was able to place foundations and I was able to place walls. But the foundations weren't actually forcing you to place it at a high enough height. And you can see here that I'm placing them and I'm ending up with a foundation that's basically too small for the player. I was still able to place it at the maximum height, but I wasn't forced to do so. And ultimately what I wanted to have was being forced to do that. I can also place walls at an incorrect height here as well, and it just caused a whole lot of dramas. So the first thing I did in order to fix this was that I just removed the height restrictions. So any cell that you were able to place on, you could just place basically as long as it's 0.5 apart, you could place as many as you wanted. And it counted for walls and foundations. And then once that was done, I took a different approach where I adjusted the scriptable object for this and I started setting heights and sizes for these inside of there that I would then use to be able to determine what was actually a valid height of placement or not. And it was a bit of a rework in order to do this, but it was pretty good because it means that my removal system, when I put that in, is going to be able to leverage this quite nicely and make it a bit easier. And what that's resulted in is that I can now still place my walls and foundations the same, but I have to go to the maximum height. And then I'm also able to, on any other wall, place this differently. So once I set a height different, then I can, I have to adhere to the height that I've set for that. So this is really good because it means that I can build on uneven terrain really easily, but I can always force the user to be building at a certain height. So you can see here that if I set a foundation height, I'm still limited to that foundation height regardless of which side of the wall I'm looking at. As long as I'm within that one cell, I get forced to start using that height. The next thing that I wanted to capture was dropped items. So I didn't like the idea of things just going directly into your inventory, and I wanted to have a way that you can drop items and spawn them in the world. And the way I've done that is by creating these little spinning animations on each of the items that you have, or that you can pick up. And you can still press E to pick them up the same way as you did before. But now you can also click and drag them to drop them out of your inventory as well. And if I were to swap to the scene view here and pick up this item and throw it, you can see that it's got a little bit of a bounce to it, which is nice. And just zooming in on it, you can see it's got a little bit of a shard glow and then just the glow in the center here. And this glow as well is a thing that I can just change for item rarity, for example, just to give it a bit more of that, you know, shine if it's something that is actually rare. Now in the last devlog, while I talked about how I don't mind having this prototyping area to be able to see things, I was actually pretty excited about the idea of making my own terrain. Now I did not know at the time how difficult making terrain is, uh, but I've started my first attempt at it and that is gonna be over here. Now in this terrain, I've just got a little starting zone that I've created. I'm just using the standard Unity terrain here and building it out that way. It allows me to paint and build things into the world. And we've got this new starting zone that I just have a little bit of a village that I'll put here and a little field that you can start in. And now, so jumping to my player view, this is where you would start in the world. And it's actually looking okay. It's definitely a first pass at it and I'll refine it over time. But it's also a good time to show you both the terrain and also that we have changed our equipment system. So I can pick up these dropped pickaxes. And if I drag it down onto my hockey bar here, and if I press one, you'll see that it actually spawns into my hand. And the great thing about this is, while I don't need to have a pickaxe permanently attached to my hand anymore, uh, I can press two or any other button and unequip it. And it also ties in to the rest of the actual breaking system. So if I'm breaking this rock here, I can only do it if I have a pickaxe. And it's actually also only a pickaxe of the appropriate level. So there'll be different tiers of rocks and everything else that is already built in, just isn't implemented yet. 
but um, I can get to the end of that and finish it and you'll see that now when I break this I spawn my rocks out and the rocks here are randomized the amount that I spawn and just a little bit of random bounce to them and, and direction that gets applied. Uh, I've also got just a few things in here that I can pick up as well just to test out so we've got some sticks we've got some rocks and I also over here through just a little fiber plant all of these now could just be thrown out of my inventory as well and so they can spawn into the world and I can also pick up the which is a saw to, it's, it's a cleaver I suppose but I'm using it as a hatchet for now and if I change to two I swap to that hatchet now and it's the same as the uh, other system with mining so I can go over here I can break things there is also a randomized sound that plays here it's a little bit subtle but maybe you can pick it up and I can't obviously use a pickaxe against a tree so it knows which type of weapon I'm using I can't use bare fists against it I also can't use something weird like a stick against it but when I hit that last one there I'll spawn some wood and actually at the moment it's spawning inside of there so it's being pushed under the world but wood also spawns that I can then loot as well and yeah so this this area will probably be something like where you would start I think and you'll have this little maybe a miniature tutorial that walks you through as you head towards this first town and then you'll have your sort of first town here and that that will probably just be a bunch of carts and maybe one or two little straw houses or so and then your little you know village chief or mayor's house will be on this little miniature hill that I've got over here. So I'm tracking everything on an Azure DevOps board where I've just got everything in you know backlogs ready for dev doing done and I filled it out quite a fair bit already with different things for the different dev logs that I've done to date and this will keep growing over time. I'm probably going to add more overarching themes in here. You can see I've got, you know, theory for the story of the world that I'll start writing out. And each, each of these tickets just have a little bit of information of something that I might need for myself in the future or if I forget how to do it. The only change to this that I'll probably make, I'm enjoying it at the moment, but the only change to this that I'll probably make is create sprints for each of the devlogs. So I can start tracking here what I, the work I've done for devlog one, two, three, and so on. So it's just an easy way to keep all that information in one place and be able to look back on it to know when a piece of work was done, uh, if I ever need a reference to it. Okay, so that's all I really had to show for this one here. There's quite a lot of things that I'm working on as always. I'll also be doing more tutorials coming out soon for the various systems. I just really want to make sure that they're properly refined. I'm refactoring them a few times in here because I'm doing it in a little bit of a dirty way to get it to work and then refactoring it to make it nice. So stick around to get tutorials on all of those things. I haven't yet narrowed down the few major systems that I want to do for the next devlog. Also, maybe just give me some feedback around, I've done quite a lot in this devlog and I've left maybe a few of the minor things out. If the minor things are what you're more interested in, rather than just seeing these major developments and a few of the underhood things just work, then let me know. It does mean I can do probably a few more devlogs of smaller things and more frequently, but I'm happy doing this as well, where I just do, you know, two or three major systems and then do a devlog of how they're all interacting and working together. But yeah, that's it for this one. So I will see you guys in the next one. As always, I'd like to give a shout out to my patrons who make this video possible. In the Emerald tier, we have Demand Games and Infinite Canvas. In the Gold tier, we have Castle Coders and Soap. In the Silver tier, we have Sunday Roast, Jim Hawkins with Lumi, and Hickey92. Thanks guys, if you'd like to sign up, it's patreon.com slash and I'll see you guys in the next one.